A welcome to an important moment in your life. A moment with the Word of God. I introduce to you Reverend Father Patrick Henry Eddins. He is coming with a declaration of the Word of God to bless your life. Warning. What you're about listening to holds the capacity to change your destiny. So pay attention. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Habakkuk chapter 2 I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to his complaint then the Lord replied write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. And will not prove false. It speaks of the appointed time of the end and it will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Amen. Lord, we pray and thank you for it is for an appointed time. And the revelation will not prove false. We we'll receive the grace to wait. For your word says, do it linger, wait for it. Lord, I wait for it. I wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Thank you, Father. Thank him for the revelation that will not prove false. Thank him and receive the grace to wait for whatever he has purposed for your life. Receive the grace to wait. Ask him for the grace to wait. Even though it is delayed, ask him for the grace to wait. Ask him for the grace to wait. Ask him for the grace to wait. Thank you, Father, who received the grace to wait in the name of Jesus. I share with you a message from the first reading, Acts of Apostle, from chapter 1, from verse 12 to 14. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew. James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The first reading of today. I share with you on the power of waiting. The power of waiting. The scripture that I just read from Habakkuk chapter 2, it was not a pre-designed thing. I just opened the scripture. I believe God wanted me to look at something, and that's what I saw. And um, the end of the reading says, wait. So when I saw it, I said, I think the Spirit is speaking. The Spirit is speaking. It could be the word of knowledge for somebody, could be prophecy for somebody, could be direction for somebody, could be encouragement for somebody, but I know certainly 
God is like confirming the message today and perhaps making it personal and particular to an individual. That even if it delays, the vision is for an appointed time. The revelation is for a set time. It speaks of the end. Even though in the beginning it may not seem to click, it waits for the, the end, the appointed time. If it delays, you should wait. Wait for it. Don't let the vision wait for you. You wait for the vision. I share with you today on the power of waiting. I pray that God will give revelation. I pray very sincerely that God will give revelation, will give instruction. That God will give instruction, will give revelation that will instruct somebody. I don't know how it's going to come, but I know he has a word for somebody. Uh, for somebody who is waiting for the word. All right. Now the reading again, they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they were upstairs. They went upper room, went to the upper room, to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the Zealots, and Judah, son of James. They all joined. They were united. A different way of saying they all joined in prayer they all joined in prayer they were united together they were joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and mary the mother of jesus and with his with his brothers now this whole context this whole passage can be summarized in one word waiting Waiting. That's what the passage is talking about. Waiting. Did they need to wait? Now, let's go to the beginning of, of that same chapter. The first chapter of Acts of Apostle. Let's try to trace the context. So that this particular passage may make more meaning. Verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gift. Wait. But wait for the gift my father promised. Which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. But in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, so when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Obviously, they had not gotten the message. Obviously, they were, they were not yet able to get the revelation. Obviously, they had not yet connected the intention and the direction of the master. So they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Did the apostles, after they had been gathered for three years, drilled, groomed, taught, informed, admonished, educated, did they really need to wait again? That's what I want you to think about. Jesus came, called them, there were multitudes, there were disciples, many who followed him, but he carefully selected these twelve, the very close ones. He taught them. As he will teach others generally in parables, he will teach them in plain language. He will explain the mystery of the kingdom to them. They have been taught about the mystery of his body and his blood. They have been taught about the kingdom. Several kingdom, kingdom reality was revealed to them. In a normal circumstance, in a general sense of it, ordinarily, one will agree with the pastor that it was time to go. After three years of formation, it was time to go, to do, to become. And there was Jesus telling them, do not leave Jerusalem, wait. 
You can understand why they had to set aside the instruction of Jesus. Wait, wait for what? The promise of the Father. Another, what, what, you know, it didn't make sense. So they put aside the instruction of Jesus. He told them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my Father. The gift promise which you have heard me speak about. Wait, John baptized with water. In few days he will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. It didn't make sense to them. Now remember, Jesus had been arrested before them. He was he was cruelly treated. He was killed on the cross. He was buried. Eventually, hope was done with his resurrection. After these forty days of appearing, being with them, teaching them again, instructing them again, still on the kingdom. You mean you mean we still need to wait? They will not understand. They were in a hurry. Thank God you are back from the dead. Thank God you have opened the door for us. Thank God you have vindicated us. People now know that we are not frost stars. People now know that we are not imposters. People now know that we are not just like one of those parties, one of those groups, one of those sects that came in the past. The leader of which was killed and the group was scattered. In our own case, it is different. You have come back from the dead. We have seen it. Now is as the time come for us, to take over the kingdom and to reign. If you want to go to heaven, you can go. Let us, can we start it now? He said, wait. That's what I want to share with you. The power of waiting. The mystery of waiting. It is against the natural human nature. When I say natural human nature, because as a Christian, you have another nature. The second nature, which is the nature, the divinized nature in you. But there is the natural nature, the carnal nature, the real nature of man, the Adam. That nature does not wait, does not like to wait. Look at that nature from a child that is born. When the child intends to crawl, when it is time for a child to crawl, the child will prefer to walk. When is the time, the, the, the time for the child to start walking, the child will prefer to run. When the time has come for the child to start running, the child, the child will prefer to climb. The child is so impatient with himself. He does not take one at a time. The child will prefer, he sees you jumping and he can barely walk, but he wants to jump. He will get and sit upon his seat and want to jump also. Waiting is not a natural thing to us. That's what a natural person in your nature, the way you are, you cannot synchronize with God's purpose. You cannot connect him. You can walk with God for 100 years. All that happened in your walk with God was fighting, a consistent, continuous fighting. You are walking with him, but it's a fighting walking, a walking that does not profit you, a walking that does not bring about realization and fulfillment.